Joining me now is best-selling author Douglas Murray. Douglas, let's start with Biden's worst nightmare. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. And it's black and Hispanic voters abandoning him for Trump. The former president is picking up support from minority voters because they did better in his economy. What do you make of this a phenomenon of minority voters leaving the Democrats for Trump? Well, they've been trying to deal with it for some years and they haven't been dealing with it very well. Um, you'll remember, Rita, that in the Trump years, uh, whenever any of the mainstream media noticed the fact that black and Hispanic Americans were actually voting for Donald Trump in larger numbers than for previous Republican presidents and contenders, um, they, they, they really didn't know how to interpret this. And that's why they kept on falling back to the idea that actually these were a new type of white supremacist, um, usually a you know, Hispanic <laughs> white supremacist or a black white supremacist. Um, and it, it, it's very curious that I, I predict the same thing will happen in this cycle if, if Trump and Biden uh, continue to be the likely contenders. Uh, they will continue, the media will continue to try to find ways to um, not understand these voters, um, but to demonize them or castigate them in some way. But of course, it is, as you mentioned, it is a very interesting um, observation that, that that black voters and uh, and other ethnic minority voters would be turning to Trump in larger numbers. It says something about his economic policies. It says something about Biden's economic policies and much more. So I do hope this time some of the media actually uh, uh, looks into the story rather than just trying to demonize the subject. Well, Trump has won substantial gains with non-white voters. Uh, this is according to the latest New York Times Siena poll released over the weekend. Hispanic voters now actually favour Trump over Joe Biden by a six-point margin. I mean, if you said that, I don't know, 10 years ago, even five years ago, you would have been called crazy. But I tell you, Douglas, not uh, everyone is coping with this new data. Uh, have a look at this Discussion between former NBA star Charles Barkley and CNN's Gail King. First of all, so. I'm just going to say this. If I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm going to punch him in the face. Charles. I know, Gail. Charles. Gail. Gail, Gail you, I, you really can't say that because, A, you don't mean that. You, oh, I mean that <laughs> sincerely. How persuasive is celebrity opinion, celebrity endorsement? Or celebrity shaming, like we saw saw there, for um, black voters, female voters, and and young voters, uh, is this a factor in the election? Uh, no, I mean celebrity endorsements have have been shown to be absolutely no use for many cycles now. Um, it, not not least by uh, Donald Trump's initial election win in twenty sixteen where, um, you know, all the celebrity class came out against him. And it turned out the celebrity class weren't, weren't large enough in number, Rita, to um, make up for the voters. Uh, uh, it's a very, very interesting thing because, of course, the more that people talk that sort of talk, uh, the more that they enjoy uh, ridiculing uh, not just the candidate, but anyone who would vote for him. Uh, the more they just sort of expose themselves actually to a different type of political instinct, which is the political instinct of, I'm going to kick at you all. And actually that instinct, you know, not only can I uh, can I get the, the uh, rival, I can actually, I can kick at all of those people who've been hectoring me and lecturing me from high moral positions for years. I can kick at all of you and it's gonna feel good. So the more the more that people talk like that and talk down to the to, to potential Trump voters, indeed voters of any kind, uh, the more I think they'll realize that they lose the public.